I'm Tree and this is Stitchless TV and I'm going to show you some easy ways to create lovely, neat, easy French seams. <laughs> particularly we use it with our bucket coat. Two, maybe three ways to sew French seams like this. Like this. This is really important. The main, main thing when you sew a French seam is usually when we sew, we have a rule. We always put right sides together on our fabric. So that's like the top of my hands are right sides. Right sides together with your fabric, almost always. But with French seams, you put wrong sides together. You have to remember that, because that's key to doing the French seams. So it's wrong sides together first. And then, right sides together. But having your head, French seams, you begin fabric wrong sides together. I just thought I'd overemphasize that. With that in mind, <laughs> I do not put my fabric right sides together. That's the wrong side of my fabric. Okay, look, it's different from the, the right side. So that's the wrong side of my fabric. And I'm going to make a sandwich of the wrong side of the fabric being together. Now I'm just going to put a clip or a pin at the top of my fabric by the neck. And then, on our sewing pattern, we have a notch for where you're supposed to stop okay now usually we stop like a seam allowance away for other methods of sewing the seams so I always put a pin or a clip wherever I need to stop and wherever I need to start because then I can work out how much slack or what the fit needs to be for the stuff in between so I'm just going to clip everything into place. So my fabric, going on about it a lot, I know, is wrong sides together so I can see the right side of the fabric. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew, this is traditionally the way that you do it, I'm going to sew very close to the edge. So like two millimeters away from the edge. So I am making sure that the under fabric is matching up with the edge of the top fabric. I'm not stretching anything. Now it is very hard to sew in a straight line so close to the edge of a fabric. So sometimes what people do is they will allow extra seam allowance so they can first sew like more like a centimeter away from the edge and then they'll trim it back but if you're working to the seam allowance that we have on this pattern which is sort of like half an inch or one and a half centimeters i haven't allowed extra for that so i'm just sewing close enough to the edge but being careful to make sure that I've got everything. Now you could just keep going like that, being careful to sew close to the edge and capturing everything or you could do what makes it a lot easier I think. You could turn your machine to a zigzag like an average size zigzag and basically just zigzag that edge. Now if you have a tricky fabric it's particularly good 
to do this. So I'm basically doing the equivalent to like um, surging or overlocking the edge, making sure my fabrics are both together. And I think that could be easier than trying to sh sew two millimeters away from the edge. Now important that you capture both fabrics. We've got our fabrics wrong sides together and we've done our small seam allowance. Now flip over your fabric so you're on the back side of the fabric and now now you're going to sew with your fabric right sides together. So you've really got to, I mean it's handy to, to use an iron to do this, but you've got to kind of go like this to your fabric to really bring it so it's right to the edge. So open it out maybe underneath and then find that seam. Stick your hand in the way so no one can see. Okay, so do that all the way along. So look at the zigzag edge. The zigzag edge is still good. And it's a foolproof way of making sure that your fabrics do not slip when you're trying to do such a small seam allowance. So when you've done that, now you are going to sew a small seam allowance, small enough to clear what you've just sewn a minute ago, because <laughs> that's going to be inside and we don't want to see all the fluffy bits, do we? So we sewed like a two millimetre um, seam away from the edge. So I'm just going to do a little bit bigger than that. Now let me put a pin there so you can see. So I think, so I think my seam allowance that I'm going to do now is going to be something like that, about half a centimetre. So for what we're doing today, I want to drive in from the edge to the actual seam allowance. Uh, just, oh, but I don't want it zigzag. I want it on straight stitch. Uh, just trust me on that. So I've gone backwards and forwards. Oops, gone a bit good. And now I'm going about the width of the foot, actually. Not the width of the foot, but my foot is on, the edge of my foot is on the edge edge of that French seam bit there. So still being very careful not to stretch. Coming all the way up. And then when you go, when you get to the end, just go backwards and forwards. So we attached the, the raglan sleeve onto the back piece. Now we're going to attach the raglan sleeve onto the front section and I'm going to show you another method for doing a French seam. But strangely, it's using an overlocker. I do feel a bit naughty, but honestly, I found that if I do this first bit with an overlocker, it not only goes really close to the edge, but it means that my fabrics don't slip away and it doesn't fray as well because I have got very free, free, yeah, fabric. Both edges are wrong sides together, wrong sides together. So look, that, that really is a lot easier. But obviously not if you haven't got an overlocker. So if I flop that over, so that's it there, I'll flop it over. You can see it's perfectly, perfectly neat and good for me to then come in and sew whatever seam allowance you want to do away from the edge.
So then the next part is just the same as the other, the other method. I'm just going to sew enough of a small seam allowance to clear whatever is inside. But when I begin for this project, I'm going to drive in from nothing a little bit like that and then do my seam allowance away. Now if you are here just to learn about how to sew easy French seams, then you are done. But if you want to know how to do French seams for our coat and how to intercept, intercept French seams, then you might want to stick around. So I'm now looking at my coat with the fabric right sides up. And the first place that I want to pin with the seam allowance going towards the sleeve is the armpit. I'm not pinning it, I'm pegging it. So coming down the sleeve to the armpit, making sure your seam allowance is pushed towards the sleeve. Now as you approach this sharp corner, you might want to just get your fabric, create a kind of pleat, so you're sort of pretending that you're just going straight. Now come to the end of the, the point of your buckety bit. So look, this is what we have. So everything looks quite neat. That's the armpit bit. Okay, and now we need to turn our fabric so it's right sides together. Look. Can you see that? So that's going to be nice and neat because I did the driving in from the edge and then going to the seam allowance when I applied the raglan part of the sleeve. So you sew all the way around the edge of your seams now. Okay, but I just want to say a couple of things, okay? Now, I don't think that the box things should go much wider than the side of your arms, but you might like them like that. So, you may need to modify the back or, or take a bit more fabric on the raglan at the back because, I mean, it depends upon the size of your shoulders. I've got really small shoulders. So, so I need to bring, look, can you see that? I need to I'll come closer. I need to bring my neckline in a little bit, and the only way I can do that is to sort of pinch out some of that stuff at the back, or to have a centre back seam. So I don't know how much you can see. But it's quite easily amazing, don't you think? Now, because our pattern is the same at the back as it is at the front. We know, because we say on the pattern, that we do need to shape the neck a little bit at the front. And we do that by cutting through the facing when it's in its position, yeah? Now the method that I'm going to use for applying my uh, collar, I'm going to do it so that I've stitched down my facing, finish off my hem, and the last thing I do is apply the collar. So I stitch it on, and then I flap it over, tuck everything all in, notch, not notch, snip into the curve, tuck everything in, and then hand sew it inside. If you want a tutorial for that, just let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.